Let's begin with a drum set. Listen for an explosive live sound. The snare should be crisp and the cymbals should ring. Good morning, Aurora. News, weather, and really cool interviews. Monday through Friday from 8 to 9 a.m. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Aurora. The time is now 8 o'clock a.m. You are listening to and watching Good Morning, Aurora, the second largest city's first daily news podcast. It's Thursday, the 2nd of June, and uh, it's almost Friday. Feels good outside. It's nice. The sun is out. The birds are chirping. The ducks are waddling. 
and we're here with each other. We've got a great guest today. We have my dear friend, Alan Hernandez, and a new friend, Christopher Miller. Both of them are representing the Rush. Excuse me. Damn, I already messed up. Hold on, see? We got a button for that. <laughs> the Road Home Program at Rush. There you go. Yes. Good morning. How you guys doing? Doing good, doing good. All right, all right. Yeah. Brooke Shanley's here. Good morning to you, Brooke. Shout out to all of the veterans out there as well. So this is going to be a, a uh, episode with a lot of good information and a lot of good resources for folks. We also have the social media of the Road Home Program, which we will plug in uh, from time to time as well. Jennifer Ryan Maiden's here. Good morning, Jennifer Ryan Maiden and Alyssa O'Connor. Good morning. Uh, so first things first, we'll talk about the Road Home Program and get to know who we have with us. Tracy Hodges, good morning. Uh, we'll start with you, sir. What is your name and where you're from? Oh yeah, thanks, uh, thanks, Curtis. Thanks for having us on. Uh, my name is Chris Miller. Um, originally from Louisville, Kentucky, and yeah. uh, moved <laughs> moved uh, to Chicago about a decade, a little over a decade ago. Okay. All right. All right. Hi. Um, thanks for having us again. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Aurora. Um, my name is Alejandra Hernandez. You can call me Ale. Okay. Ali. And I am with the Road Home Program. I'm an outreach coordinator. I was born here in Aurora, Illinois. All right, all right. Good to see you again, Alan. Good to see you. Um, so, what is the Road Home Program for those who are unfamiliar? And it's at Rush, so um, in Chicago. Uh, go ahead and talk about it. Yeah. So the the Road Home Program at Rush. Uh, you know, we're located at Rush University Medical Center, downtown Chicago. Uh, also have a clinic in downstate Illinois in Effingham. Uh, okay. If you're, uh, listening from a little further down south, uh, but we are a mental health clinic uh, for veterans and their families, and we we specialize in in trauma, um, whether that's combat related trauma, sexual trauma. Um, that that's our specialty. Uh, so helping veterans overcome PTSD, depression, anxiety, um, and, and their family members. How do you uh, what was it like living with uh, someone who's been affected by trauma and you know, making sure that that uh, veteran and, and family household unit is is all good right um, how has how has mental health identifying or even seeing what's going on how has that changed and progressed in the last 10 years because you've been here 10 years doing this right yeah so we opened in in well, I started in 2012. Uh, we opened the doors in 2013. Uh, yeah, so it's been a while. Um, and for us at Rush, uh, or at the Road Home Program, it, it's really changed. Uh, we started as a small clinic on the west side of Chicago, thinking we would maybe serve 50 veterans a year. Um, and, and over the course of time, uh, and, and through you know generous donations and funders, uh, philanthropic donations, <laughs> We've been able to grow and expand. Uh, that reach has gone from the west side of Chicago to the Chicago, to the Chicagoland area, to the state of Illinois. Uh, and, and now for the past th four or five years, we, we were able to help veterans all over the country. Uh, Wonderful. We've brought folks in from every state in the, every state in the country uh, to include some of the, uh, you know, Puerto Rico, Guam, American Samoa. We've had folks come from Mexico, Canada, Germany, you know, it, it's it's amazing to see how a small clinic, you know, with, with a little bit of help just blew up. How about that for a good message to start the day off with? I mean, if you just plant that little seed, right? And now it's grown into into something great. Uh, Liza Perez is here. Good morning, Liza. She says, first time I've heard of this. Yeah, yeah we're, we're, we're doing everything we can, you know, to expand and, and to grow. Uh, and that, that's part of the fun that Allie and I get to have every day is... Right. Sharing the message. That's yeah. that's that mission that we have. Uh, you know, we have a great team of doctors, great team of clinicians, uh, providers, um, and, and Allie and I. We get to go out and and just share that message. Allie, when did you join the team? In uh, early a April. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Late March, early April. All right. And what's your role specifically? Outreach coordinator. Okay. All right. Getting the word out. Very good. You're doing a good job because here you are, right? Yes, <laughs> I am. You got the word out and brought the word in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> man. Super uh, close. Time is 8.05 a.m. Eric Chessier is here. Good morning, Ali Hernandez and, Kurt, and Chris. Good morning to you. Um, Debbie Watkins-Selecki is here. Good morning, Debbie. And Jasmine, our dear friend. Hola, Ale. All right. Um, so mental health for veterans. 
this is an area which um, I think that the government got involved to put more money and more resources towards it because for a long time it had a kind of taboo nature. That's me on the outside looking in kind of thing. Is it is that the case, or is that you know what's your opinion about that? You know that that was my personal experience. Okay. Um, I got out of the Marine Corps in two thousand four. Okay. Uh, moved to Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, you know I, I was in the invasion of Iraq. One of the first, you know, I got got out in two thousand four, so I went into the VA mm -hmm. and looked for mental health resources and stuff like that, and it just, you know, I didn't look like the typical Vietnam veteran, or exactly. um, you know it. It wasn't, just wasn't uh, as prevalent as it is today. Uh, so, um, you know, thankfully, uh, in the last 17, 18 years, things have really changed, especially with the VA. Right. Uh, when we opened in, in 2013, um, you know, part of the, the mission of us opening was to help, you know, bridge that gap and, uh, re, you know, reduce barriers to care. There, there were long wait times at the VA and, you um, you know, a lot of issues with veterans really needing mental health care uh, and not not being able to access it. Um, right. So that was that was kind of the impetus for us starting. And um, it, it was great to see that the VA has really changed, uh, especially over the past few years. It, they've gotten much better. Their services are are, are really catching up, and, and really um, they're really doing a good job uh, of of their mental health care. So um, you know. There, there's so many veterans out there that need help. You know, we're just another you know kind of cog in that wheel. You mentioned uh, you mentioned health, or excuse me, you mentioned mental health and resources for veterans and their families. Why the families, Chris? Yeah, you know, oftentimes it's it's the family member that uh, that, that recognizes the problem. Right. Uh, you know, uh, the family members know that sort of baseline of, of where the veterans at and you know they have that history so they know pre-trauma they know post-trauma uh, and, and can notice that difference so uh, and, and like myself uh, a lot of times veterans uh, can be stubborn maybe reluctant to go get hair to, right. to go get care <laughs> um, and, so you know the family right. members come in and, and we have support groups for the family members uh, to, to help and the family members don't have to come in or can come in without the veteran you know they can come in independent of the veteran right so um, a lot of times we see family members come first and then uh, once it they get familiar with us and um, like the services that they're getting the veteran will come shortly after that's good to know that's good to know um, because one of the things I was fortunate enough last week that we had on a uh, Illinois Joining Forces. Yeah. Um, Mr. Jim Dolan, yeah, Jim. Claudia Germano, great people. Um, and what they mentioned was the invisible scars. And family members are the people who, like you said, they can identify that, but it's kind of hard to push a person to do something because you, you don't want to, you don't want to pry. And you don't want to pry. And I think that for a long time, a lot of people just didn't seek the help because a the veteran may not like you said may be reluctant to reach out the family member doesn't want to push so the next thing you know a month turns to six months now years go by and the issue is unaddressed um so but i listened to a question what was it like with covid hmm. uh, with you guys working yeah so covid ha had a big effect on our treatment model um and you know, I think uh, the ability to adapt and overcome <laughs> yes. uh, what was, was definitely huge. Uh, so we, had, we, we ended up having to take a pause from inpatient or from uh, folks coming into the clinic in person uh, for a couple months. Right. Um, our flagship program, we have a two week program where we bring in veterans from all over the country. We, we fly them in, house them, um, feed them the whole nine yards. We had to pause that. Uh, for for a couple months, and that allowed us to retool, reconfigure what we're doing, and uh, we we shifted our model from a three week uh, program to a two week program. Um, we were able to during COVID, uh, especially during the first few months, uh, provide virtual options uh, for for our intensive program, and then 
we were able to offer in the state of Illinois virtual services. Uh, we really switched over to telehealth um, and became quite good at it. So, um, you know, just get, you just got to pivot. There, there's ways to accomplish the mission. Um, if it doesn't look the same, you know, it, everybody had to adapt to COVID. So there's ways so to accomplish we. the mission if it doesn't look the same. I like that. I like that's right. That's right. If you want it bad enough, you'll get it done. Um, hey, Alec, I see you. Uh, <laughs> they're saying hi in the chat to Alec. Uh, Adeline was went to good Love morning you. to you. Um, and Liza Perez wants to know about contact information. So let's share a little oh, bit yes. of that real quick. Uh, we'll, we'll keep plugging it in, but how can folks get in contact with the program? Many ways. We have our LinkedIn, Instagram, the Facebook, but the primary way to get in touch with us is our website. What's the website? Roadhomeprogram. www.roadhomeprogram.org. Did you mean to say that like a commercial? <laughs> of course. This is what I do. I, I talk about the program. So, yeah, we, we um, you know, we, you can call us at 312 942 VETS. Uh, it's 8387. So, 312 942 8387. Okay. Uh, or, or the, the website. Yes. Um, and you can learn more about us there. Uh, Everything sort of funnels into, uh, we have a lady that runs our front desk. Her name's Liz. She's Liz. an Air Force veteran. Absolutely outstanding. Uh, answers all the calls coming into the program. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's how things begin. You know, all okay. it takes is a phone call. Um, yeah. And yeah, a couple that's questions. And then, and then, then we, we slot you for treatment. Yeah. Uh, Tracy Hodges says, love this support for our veterans. Thank you very much, Tracy. We appreciate that. Yes, we do. Uh, Judge Baca Camargo is here. Good morning to you. Uh, so the link is in the chat for the Road Home program. Um, so you guys can check that out. The time is 8, 12 a.m. All right, here's the thing. Next question. Um, what people have been struggling with mental health for decades. And you mentioned like the Vietnam era and uh, the way health looked, right? So basically, if, you, if you've got all 10 fingers and toes, people have assessed veterans and thought, he doesn't really need to help, right? So my question is, um, has the change come because of advances in technology? Or has it come because the veterans now are, I guess younger and more you know conflicts have changed you know the people who are unfortunately getting wounded or have been wounded in places like Afghanistan Iraq are young people kind of our generation people that we know is that what spurred the change or was it just advanced in technology what do you what do you think about that it's more of an opinion based question than yeah, that's a fan fantastic question um, if I had to answer I'd, I'd say a little bit of both okay. you know I think one, there's been fantastic uh, advances in the treatment modalities and the ways we're able to provide treatment for trauma. Um, we, we have an excellent research team uh, at the Road Home Program that's doing all kinds of high-tech stuff with machine learning and uh, all kinds, you know, we've done bright light studies and uh, you name it, they're, they're researching it. Right. Uh, and at the same time, I think you got to give a lot of credit to some of the newer organizations, you know, the Wounded Warrior Project, um, Mission Continues, Team Red, White, and Blue, uh, and, and some of these organizations, Illinois Joining Forces that you mentioned earlier, uh, especially on a state and local level, uh, destigmatizing mental health care. Um, you know, for a long time, you know, mental health care was somewhat taboo. Right. Uh, and we also owe it to the, the Vietnam vets. You know, those, those folks started up the vet centers. You know, they said they weren't getting what they needed, so they did it themselves. So, right. um, you know, a it, 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 combination of all three of those. <laughs> uh, Teresa Hernandez says, good morning, awesome program. Glad to hear it. Thank you very much. Yeah, these guys are doing a very good job in everything that they do. If you're just tuning in, we're here with our friends of the Road Home Program at Rush, Alec Hernandez and Mr. Christopher Miller, the time is 8.15 a.m. Mariana Galvez, good morning to you as well. Okay, so we're going to take a, we're going to go to that commercial I was telling you guys about. I have a piece of information here, ladies and gentlemen, that I will detail to you where to go. Oh, yeah, it's right here. I'm going to get this. I got a couple things to tell you guys about, then we'll get back to our great discussion here, but this is very important. So coming up is 
Uh, the 15th Annual Community Health Fair is on June 11th in Aurora. Uh, the Canyon County Health Department, in partnership with the Aurora African American Health Coalition and Blue Cross Blue Shield of Illinois, is proud to sponsor the 15th Annual Health Fair. It'll be uh, June 11th from 9 a.m. to noon at the Prisco Community Center, 150 West Illinois Avenue. Uh, it's free, open to the public, and includes immunizations, vaccines, speakers, vendors, activities, fitness demos, healthy snacks, a farmer's market, and giveaways. Wow. Yo, I'm gonna be there. Uh, in addition, see the event, or excuse me, the event will cost, uh, will feature no cost health screenings, excuse me, panel C, testing that consists of a 37 component blood chemistry profile, prostate specific antigens, PSA, screens for signs of prostate cancer in men, and BMI, Calculations, which is body mass index, calculated if height and weight are self-reported. Uh, okay, there's that. First Friday starts tomorrow uh, for June 3rd, and it's uh, also Pride Month, so shouts all the way out. A lot of stuff is going on. Food truck court is going to be from 5 to 9. Harvey's Firebox, Snow Cone Sisters, and Holy Pierogi are some of the ones that will be out there. VHS tapes are making a comeback from 5 to 9 p.m. at Super Jumbo. Who would have thought? Right? <laughs> that VHS, why did we throw them away? You know? You Anybody know. still got VHS? I still have some. Um, Aurora Tap House has DJ Happy Meal at 9 p.m. Treadwell has live music from 5 to 9. And The Perch, 31 West Downer Place, third floor, will host a mindfulness craft and offer summer self-care tips from 5 to 8 p.m. The time is 8, 17 a.m. Okay. So you guys are both Marines. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So let's talk about the Marine Corps for a little bit. Let's let's let's. <laughs> and if anybody, <laughs> all right, let's do it. <laughs> if anybody out there is a Marine, you can uh, put that in the chat for us. Um, here's my question. First of all, how did you like the Marine Corps? How'd you both like it? Share some, you know, just share what you uh, share what you felt about it. Well, when I when I went in, I was really excited and had a pretty open mind, but. Um, I think it was right by my third year mm -hmm. when I was about to get out, I was just pretty tired of it. I um, was tired of don't ask, don't tell, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, during that time, I couldn't like be honest and open with myself and others. Right. And um, that really took a toll on me. Okay. So I was, it, it was a mix, I would say. So I, overall, pretty happy. I just knew that it was going to be very difficult, right. you know, given the circumstances that I was like enlisting into. And you and I have talked about about it before. I've seen you light up, telling many fantastic moments and sharing things about it too. But I do understand yeah. that, and I recall the "don't ask, don't tell" policy um, and everything that that entailed. Chris, what about you, my brother? Yeah, um, you know, I, I joined before nine eleven, so started out kind of fun. Uh, I was a 19 year old kid from Kentucky and all of a sudden I'm living in Orange County, California. Uh, that was pretty fun. I got to travel around the world, saw, you know, Southeast Asia, uh, went, went for six months, you know, holy smokes, this is kind of fun, you know. I get to do, you know, all the stuff I thought when I was a kid, you know, play G.I. Joe or Rambo running through the jungles of, of yeah, like Thailand. Really be that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it was kind of awesome. Uh, and then, you know, 9-11 happened and then things took a turn for the more serious. Um, so I got to experience sort of both sides of it. But, right. you know, overall, the, the, the four years I spent in the Marine Corps were, were pretty fun. Uh, made lifelong friends, amazing friends, uh, you know, brothers. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a pretty enjoyable experience. Did you guys learn anything about yourselves in the Corps that you didn't know was in you? Where you join? Mm, I would say that <clears throat> confidence. Because I lacked a lot of it when I was younger at 19. Okay. So I feel like I learned a lot of confidence in myself. So that way I could be a good leader. Okay. Just be able to stand up for myself and others. Confidence. All right. Yeah. All right. Chris? Yeah. Uh, <sighs> Strength, you know, not not necessarily physical strength, uh, although that was certainly a part of it. You know, mm -hmm. PT and like a like a madman, but 
um, you know, going through, uh, you know, the invasion of Iraq, that was, that was something else. So, you know, I was able to get through that and, you know, I figure if I can get through four years of the Marine Corps, a war, there's nothing I can't do. You can do pretty much anything. Um, so what are some of the, what are some of the number one issues that a person reaches out to the Road Home Program about? What's the, is there a number one uh, ailment or issue? You know, I, I'd say it's uh, just general PTSD. You know, we, we get a lot of veterans, whether it's, you know, folks that served prior to 9-11 from mm -hmm. the Vietnam era. Uh, we get a lot of folks post 9-11 veterans. Um, you know, PTSD is not uh, as taboo of a of a name anymore. Right. You know, it's it's you see it the, this with PTSD Awareness Month, right? Yep. So, um, that that's the most common complaint. You know, uh, the second one, and and it's sort of subtle, and it's it affects a lot of folks. Is it's part of PTSD is sleep problems. Uh, we see folks that trouble sleeping. You know, whether that's nightmares. Um, you know, waking up in the middle of the night, you know, anxiety, trouble getting to sleep, trouble falling to sleep. Um, so sleep is, is definitely uh, an issue. Right. Um, the, the vets who are age, uh, or rather the guys who are just now discharging from the military and coming back uh, into civilian life, in your estimation, are they adequately prepared for the return. What do you think, Alan? I would say that <clears throat> they give them, you know, the classes and the resources, but I feel like there needs to be some more follow-up. So I don't okay. know if they're doing any follow-up. That would be my question. Is there a follow-up? Do they have anyone that they can turn to, like another mentor, another buddy? Because that seems to work a lot. You have someone to talk to, and you know things are feeling like they're pressuring on you. You know, like it's it's becoming overwhelming, right, for the veteran. Right. It'd be always good to have that follow up, to have that mentor. So that's what I would ask. Okay. Yeah. Chris, what do you think? Yeah, you know, I I, I got out in two thousand four, so it's been a while. Right. Not as fresh, but uh, you know, I've heard some good things uh, coming out, especially from the army. Uh, shout out to the army. Uh, <laughs> Army folks. Shout out to the Army. Um, yeah. Uh, a co-worker of mine uh, who, who recently retired, uh, worked in the same role, 28-year um, Army soldier, uh, and just general great guy, uh, Ray Prieto, shout out if you're there. Um, he uh, became a mentor for uh, soldiers who are just leaving the service. So the Army has this new uh, program in place, so when uh, soldiers are transitioning out of the Army, um, they pair them up with local um, veterans and help mentor them through that transition phase. So Ray had volunteered for this uh, with the Army um, and, and was mentoring young, uh, young new veterans as they left the Army. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a fantastic program. So I'm looking forward to the other branches sort of copying that model and taking more of a, a mentorship role, right? You can't unfortunately leave the service with your, your fire team or your squad right. uh, as much as that would have been totally awesome. Yeah. Um, but, <laughs> right. you know, yeah. if you can yes, come yes. home and have someone there sort of guide you and, and ease that transition out, that, that would go a long way. Yeah. Um, it's the familiarity, too, though, I think is also kind of a culture. Well, maybe not a culture shock, but I think it's a shock of some kind. You've been with your team or your division, your squad, or whatever, for the longest time. And when you do transition back, you have to make a new fringe group. Because most people, and you're from Kentucky, so I can only imagine, like, you left home for a reason. There's no going back. You know, we came way too far for all that. And unfortunately, you see people who are doing the same thing. So the it, it kind of feels like you have to reinvent yourself as a brand new human in civilian life after you just created yourself as a new human in the military. <laughs> yeah. And like people yeah. don't get that. It's like they yeah. don't you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Mm. Making friends as an adult, right? Yes. Yeah, that's the exactly. Um yeah. you know, I um uh when I was living in Naperville, um, you know, I had to 
sleep on my mom's couch for a month, get my stuff squared away, get a brand new house and everything. And, and like people don't know that. They don't understand that. You know, you're just a new person. Oh, where are you from? It's like, I'm actually from here. I've just been gone a long time. And like, who? but who can you share those stories with? Who would understand that besides another vet? Nobody. Um, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's one of the things, you know, we do a lot of work with our community partners uh, and organizations. So um, we really, it, you know, one of the advi best advice I got when I was in college was uh, get involved. And so I started writing for the local, for the, the newspaper at school. Um, and, and grades were good, you know, I was active, I was engaged. Uh, and I think kind of the same thing goes for when you leave the service. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, join an American Legion, join a VFW, join Team Red, White, and Blue, or uh, Mission Continues, Wounded Warrior, do something, right? right? Get involved, find your local uh, community, right? Like, like I tell my son all the time, you know, find your tribe. Yeah. And Work. it's That's tough, right. but those organizations are out there, you know? There's yeah. folks that are just like you. You might feel like you're kind of on an island or, or by yourself, but, you know, veterans are out there, you know? Just right. a phone call away. So find, find what motivates you, what, what interests you. Uh, you found what groups that, out in San Diego that surf, you know, we found yes. organizations that go fishing, you know? Yes. There's organizations that do just about anything. Uh, I spoke with uh, a coding boot camp yesterday. So, I mean, there's, there's something for everybody. Right. Find what you like, find yourself, and then go do it. Find your tribe. Find, find your, your tribe. tribe. Um, Liza Perez says, agreed, needs follow up. That was to the yeah. point about uh, people transitioning. Yeah and, and, mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm happy to hear that the Army's doing that, you know. I didn't, other, other, um, you know, other branches should follow through with that as well. Right. So that'd be good. All right, time is 8.27 a.m. Judge Renee Cruz is here. Good morning, Judge. Kimmy D. is here. Good morning, Kimmy. And we also have something that Tracy just gave us right now, and this qualifies as something called breaking news. just seven days away from the barbecue fundraiser. Can you help the Aurora Regional Fire Museum reach our goal of providing over 200 meals to on-duty members of the Aurora Fire Department, Aurora Police Department, Kane County Sheriff, and our ER staff at Rush Copley and Mercy Hospitals? Meals are $15 each and include a choice of meat, half a chicken, two pork chops, or a combo. Oh, Lord. Yo, that sounds really... Y'all open now? <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> some, some I'm getting hungry. Seriously, yeah, I'm hungry. I've had I've had a uh, I had a Jolly Rancher and two cups of coffee. I'm starving. <laughs> uh, the meal served with applesauce, coleslaw, beans, and a roll. A roll. Grab your dinner and consider purchasing a meal to donate to a first responder as well. The um, the link for donating a meal is in the chat. Tracy was great to put that in there. Morris, we appreciate that. Tracy, good morning to you, Josue. The time is 8.28 a.m. All right. Now, here's the thing. I feel that kind of an American problem, too, but I've seen it applied to vets as well. I think that America has had a long, bad history of just, of just, giving a prescription for your problem. If you got an issue, oh, we got a pill for that. Yeah. Or take a shot or whatever, right? <laughs> we can medicate you. I think that A, that wasn't the best, but B, for that to have been the default system for vets has also been bad. What do you guys think about that? How do you guys how you guys feel about that? Because again, I'm not I haven't been in the industry, so I'm like you guys are insiders. What do you think? You know, it's it's tough. You know, from a clinical perspective, and I'm not a clinician, but uh, I know some. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, uh, medication can be beneficial. I mean, sure. it's it's, um, and at the same time, you know, I, I hear you with there, there are folks that have been over prescribed and. Uh, especially with pain meds and things like that, um, it's tricky. Um, you know, the, there's one great options as far as mental health care, like the therapy and just talking to somebody can go a long way. Um, you know, at the same time, 
in conjunction with the, you know the right medications yeah you can really see some some changes but at the same time yeah like you said shouldn't be that default right right um you know if i think that, you know the best thing is that relationship you know having the, a good relationship a good sound relationship with your doctor uh or, or therapist um and and whoever may be prescribing to you um is key you know if, if you're open and honest with them and, and you have a good good communication system with you, your therapist then you can set yourself up and, and that's some of the challenge uh, is finding a good clinician that's a good fit for you finding someone who's not okay you know just writing prescriptions left and right but um, you know taking your, your whole health not just mental health physical health the whole the whole nine yards in, in into uh, the picture All right um, time is 831 Lori Van Dyke good morning um, what was, for as much as you feel like sharing, what was the invasion of Iraq like? Mm. <laughs> wow, um, that was, it was interesting. Um, it was, you know, the, the first few days, mm -hmm. you know, I got to see that transition from, all right, we're, we're going to war with another country. Uh, there's soldiers wearing military uniforms, uh, and, um, you know, maybe a week, two weeks into it, it changed and it changed overnight. You know, we're not fighting against soldiers. You know, we're fighting against folks with passports from all countries all around. And sometimes these are young kids, uh, 14, 15 years old from Syria and Jordan, um, no military gear, you know, crappy weapons and, um, you know, that pocket full of cash and a pocket full of drugs, you know, right. met them fat pills, some, some sort of something and um, it just changed and got to see that transition from going against an army to going against some sort of insurgency um, th those first two months were rough you know making it up through that push to Baghdad it was just go 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 right. um, and then once that settled down you know two months into my deployment after we made our push, and I think we went damn near to the Iranian border. Um, by the time we got done with that, things had kind of calmed down, and, and there was there was a lull for after maybe the fall of Baghdad. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. So about a month after the fall of Baghdad, there, you know, for about six, seven months, at least in the town that I was in, not much going on. I mean, we were still patrolling and doing, you know, our mission, winning the hearts and minds, but it was kind of a unique period that I experienced in that the IEDs and, and some of the more signature, um, you know, the, the Fallujah and, and all of those things hadn't kicked off yet. Okay. So it was, it was kind of a unique time that, that initial invasion, you know, seeing, okay. seeing the, going through the breach, going through the berm and, and just keep driving until someone shoots at you and then, you know, keep repeat, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Right. Right. Uh, now, here's the reason why I asked that question. So, locally here, uh, and I'm, I'm sure in a few other cities and towns and what have you, in America, people have been not protesting, but saying rather that perhaps young people, when they leave high school, are not prepared for the military experience. You're not adequately ready perhaps mentally or emotionally for what it could entail and that since they haven't either had enough life experience and then they're thrown into the military danger situations that that front end is what potentially contributes to long-term PTSD so the question is do you think that um, the the, the people who are joining aren't ready for such an experience potentially some people never see combat some people, you know what do you guys what think i don't think yeah i've told you about this yeah i don't think they're ready because if we look at uh you know people's brains especially men versus women i've mentioned this before on the show men's their their minds their brains are not developing until like their late 20s so right. yeah i mean if you think about it you you expose that young um, service member to some stuff that they may not be ready. And then the same goes for women too. So 
I really think also that and I've told you this, like I said, that we should give them, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to um, expose them to those things. But that is just like the reality that the kind of world that we live in, correct? Right. Yeah. Right. Because we're a country that has a uh, citizens make up our armed forces, so that's yeah. just how it goes. Um, but as you guys mentioned too, though, you 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 can become a different person and deal with things. Right. Um, but I, after hearing that and reading some articles on it, I did kind of think that, well, maybe they are right. You know, if you get your, you know, your, your 18 year old kid graduating high school, what life experiences would they have had to be comparable to prepare you to invade Fallujah or whatever the case may be, or to, to be physically fit to stand the training associated with Invading a Fallujah. <laughs> and I do believe that there's so many ways that trauma can build over time that I think it's just layers of trauma. I, you know, and I'm on the outside looking in with it. You guys deal with it. But that's just how I've seen it. And I've talked to so many people and I'm like, he's kind of got a point. There's layers of trauma with this. Yeah. And I think, you know, especially, I think there's there's something to it where, you know, uh, if you're exposed to trauma at an earlier age, right? right? Say before you join the military, and then you're thrown into a traumatic experience. Now you're you're compounding problems, right? Um, which can make it really difficult once you leave service. But um, you know, it, it is it is tough. You know, those those you know, trauma's trauma. Uh, you know, I think if we could just maybe avoid all the wars, you know, right. uh, yeah. which is unrealistic, but, of course. Um, sure. you know, the, the boot camp, you know, I think they've, they've, they're making a lot of changes, right? Mm -hmm. You know, that's where yeah. you really get that, that younger self is kind of removed and now you're private or private first class Miller, private Hernandez, private first class Hernandez, right? right? Yeah. You know, that's the role of the military is to, especially during that boot camp phase is to, you know, really, you know, they, they do a good job of getting you in physical shape, you know, making sure you're in that mental shape, that right space and right time. Uh, that's got to be there as well. And, right. you know, uh, normalizing things, right? You, you go to the, you go to BAS, right? You go to the doctor, you know, once a year. Uh, and from my understanding, I think now, uh, at least once a year, mental health checkups are part of it. Right. So, yeah. I think you got to give some credit to the military. They're they're slow to adapt sometimes, but uh -huh, right. you know, maybe I always see the positive in things. You know, but um, you know, it's it's there, right? It, it takes time to implement, and it's unfortunate for folks that maybe served five, ten, fifteen years ago and beyond. But eventually, we'll get there, right? Right. Um, you know, the just like we're doing research at Rush. Military does research too, you know, so they're, right. they're understanding the problems and they might be a little slow to change, but I think they're getting there. Is there an application process for services with the Road Home program? Well, they can go on our website and just they fill out this form. It's pretty much like your name, just general questions that they have on there. And then that goes into the, in, to the uh, intake team. Okay. And then they get in contact with you via email and then Followed up with a phone call, I believe that's how mm -hmm. it goes. Yeah, so. yeah, within about 24, 48 hours. All right. And I think we forgot to mention the best, one of the best parts. Um, you know, we're, we're all about reducing barriers. There's no char there's no charge for any of our services. That was one of the so, questions I yeah, had. Yeah, right. awesome. It's, it's no cost. while we're at Rush, you know, if you have insurance, great, we'll take it. But there's no co pays generated, no bills are generated. Um, you know, no, char no charge. So whether that's your local, uh, and you're coming in for service, you'll never pay a dime. If you're living outside the state of Illinois, somewhere in California, we'll fly you in for free. We'll put you up for free. We'll take care of your food and everything you need. Just get better. That's, that's the mission. All right. Yeah. Absolutely wonderful. <laughs> Alejandro Junior is here. Good morning. And Josie Mendoza Geller, good morning. I'm home, but working today. Have a great day. Well, thank you very much, Josie. We appreciate that. We're having a great day talking to our friends of the Road Home Program at Rush. Um, okay, so now uh, it's where do we see, or where do you guys see, services and mental health for veterans progressing in perhaps the next five to ten years? 
you see anything on the horizon that looks promising? What's the name of that vaccine, or not the vaccine, but that oh, shot the, that the goes on the back? ganglion block. Yeah. Yeah, if, if you've never heard of the, the shot, there's a SGB shot, right? The stellar ganglion block. Uh, we're doing a research study on that um, currently. Uh, so it, it's a shot in the neck that blocks that sort of fight or flight response. Uh, with folks that are dealing with, with trauma. Um, that's somewhat cutting edge and kind of new. Okay. Um, folks have reported, you know, symptoms, PTSD symptoms just vanishing. Um, and at the same time, you know, our flagship program is that two-week intensive outpatient program where we bring people in. We're not alone in doing that. Uh, we're part of what's called the Warrior Care Network. So the Warrior Wounded Care Network. Yeah, yeah. the Wounded okay. Warrior Project funds not only us, but uh, the home base program at Mass General in Boston, okay. Emory University in Atlanta, and then UCLA out in uh, the West Coast. Okay. So each of those, each of the four sites provides this uh, two-week intensive outpatient program uh, in some capacity, and you know I think that the model that we've shown, right, the efficacy levels of of how we're able to treat people, you know, folks that leave us, the majority of folks after they leave us. No longer show the, the uh, no longer meet the diagnostic criteria of having PTSD anymore. So, I'm really looking at the academic community uh, across America. So, you know, shouldn't just be Rush, Mass General, UCLA, and Emory, but more of these medical centers taking on this same model, right? Right. Uh, and we've seen some organizations like the Cohen Network uh, that, that's popping up that's doing similar things. So, just just more. You know, we we can. Do a lot in this warrior care network that we're in, but still needs more. My dad is tuning in too. Good morning, Dad. My dad <laughs> was my absolute number one champion when I joined the Navy. Number one champion. He was really. I'm proud that he was proud. That's how yeah. proud you know he was my number one champion. Yeah. And awesome. as a matter of fact, uh, I remember graduating boot camp. My dad. And my dad went out to Olive Garden. This is right up there by Great Lakes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah north. Uh, and interestingly enough, I had worked at Olive Garden years before as a kid, whatever. Uh, and then I went in Olive Garden, just graduated, and you would have thought my dad had graduated from boot camp. He was the, <laughs> and he still got that Navy hat that they give you with. He's, oh, oh, yeah. My dad is, um, my dad's my champ. Uh, Norma Peterson's here. Jessica Bender and Johnny Felix. Good morning, Roar. Right back at you. The time is eight forty-three a.m. We are here with the Rush program. Uh, excuse me, the Rope Holden program at Rush. Uh, so, veteran suicide, unfortunately, has been a well, it's been an issue. But I think that the last perhaps eight to ten years. And especially with an aggressive media campaign trying to help it. Some congressional action, I think Congressman Bill Foster has some initiatives to help out locally. Some of our local partners, Simply Destiny, Mutual uh, Mutual Ground. Mutual Ground, thank you. Yeah. Are addressing and tackling the issue. How did it become an issue in the first place? Hmm. Good question. You know, I think it's been an issue for, right. for quite some time. Sure. Um, you know, I don't know if it was ever not an issue. And then we added a whole new generation of veterans, so a whole massive population group of folks that have been deployed, been in traumatic situations. So now we've got more mental health problems. But you know, if you dive into the data, I think what we're seeing is a lot of uh, a lot of the veterans that are completing suicide are older veterans. Right. You know, Vietnam era, um, you know, folks in their 60s, 70s, you know, and I, I think one of those common themes, whether it's older veterans, you know, hitting retirement, now what, now what do I do? Uh, same with the younger veterans, just leaving the service. What, what's my mission? What's my purpose in, right. in life? And, you know, if you never figured that out, uh, it could be tough. And then that sort of starts that spiral, right? It right. leads to feelings of hope and despair, you know, lack of hope and despair. And um, and then, you know, that, that sort of 
machismo of the military, right? Uh, I don't need to ask for help. I can do this. I right. got this. Um, yeah. Now you got a kind of a toxic problem, right? You've got folks that have been experienced uh, trauma. We've got folks that are too strong to ask for help, uh, and for a long time, uh, a lack of adequate health care. Now you've got that triangle of here's a problem. And, right. and I think that's what really contributed that number getting as big as it did. Right. Um, so, and, and you're right. It was. It's not that it was never not a problem, but media has changed a lot. So mm-hmm. now there's more ways to see the problem and hear about the problem, learn about the problem. Uh, and it makes me just, I can only think about what it was like in the 40s. Oh, you yeah. know, the guys who just came home from World War II, that kind of thing. Uh, but technology and, media and uh, medicine has progressed so much, man, and, and I think America goes through waves of veterans being forgotten. Mm-hmm. Look at the World War II guys. They came back to fanfare, right? Yeah. They were heroes. Korean War was forgotten. It's called the Forgotten War. Mm-hmm. The Vietnam guys came back to not being called heroes. Um, and then you had the people who invaded Afghanistan. The invasion of Iraq and things like that, and different conflicts in between. Uh, we went to war in the Balkans, I think, for a little bit, but that was a NATO conflict. So it's like there's people who don't get even seen. And and that kind of bugs me because there's no question attached to this. I'm just kind of ranting right now, I'll be honest with you. What bothers me about it is like, how can we honor veterans? But forget about others. And that pisses me off, man. It really does. It's like, it's... Yeah, it reminds, me, reminds me of a veteran uh, yeah, I met. Guy who served during the Cold War, right? So his father had served in World War II, you know, mm-hmm. all right. And uh, he, he just missed the Vietnam conflict, right? So uh, served during the Cold War, and there's no actual, you know, War, there's you know, it's right. it, and I think it, for at least this veteran in particular, it really affected him. Like, I never had the chance to do what I was trained to do, right? Um, and really feel for especially the, the, the Cold War generation, right? Uh, especially with what's going on in Russia now, uh, and these feelings of you know, kind of, kind of like my own feelings of uh, when, when I left Iraq and saw some of the towns that we were in falling, you know, right? Like, what, what was it all for, you know, right. what, what did I, what did I serve for? Out. So right. it's a shame that, that folks get forgotten like that. It is, man. It, it really is. And uh, I, I appreciate organizations like you, Illinois Joining Forces, because I'm always like, man, I just want people I just want people to be all right. That's my whole thing in life. Not even just as a veteran, not even trying to help other veterans, but just people just don't need to be, you don't need to go to sleep worrying. You don't need to, be, you don't need to wake up worrying. And I think if you're, a, and for veterans to do that is even worse. I've met people who've been like, well, uh, you know, doesn't the doesn't the military teach you to deal with PTSD? <laughs> no, it doesn't. That's the most, you know, and, and but they won't know that. But no, it doesn't. It's like a PTSD factory. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like every every day you will have yeah. a you Yeah. It's like whack a mole. You might in an eight hour day, trauma could come in many different ways, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, but but I think what you guys are doing is great. Um, now we've shared the website with folks. What's that number again? Because you were talking kind of fast. I didn't write it down. What was that number? All right. Yeah, 312 942 VETS, V E T S, or 8387. All right, I will put that in the chat for you guys. It's 8 49 a.m. You're listening to and watching Good Morning Aurora. We're here with the Road Home Program. Our friend Ali Hernandez, which is her. Fifth time on this show? Really? Is it? I don't know, four? Yo, you've been back. <laughs> you've been I, been I, I stay making moves. I can't yeah. help it. I mean, <laughs> look, what else can I say? And uh, Christopher Miller <laughs> as well of the Real Home Program. Um, yeah, our first chat with Allie ever. She shared uh, She shared about being in the Marine Corps um, with us. and I also spoke about MST. That's right. That's and right. And I talked about... The first 
episode, I think, was talking about what Latinx meant at the time. That's right. What yeah. is Latinx? Yeah. Yes, so, that is. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've had my share. <laughs> so it's eight fifty a.m. Uh, is there anything that we did not touch on just yet? Because you guys get, you guys are going to get the uh, word of the day as well. Is there anything that the Road Home Program does that we have not touched on yet? Yes. I want to give people the full gamut. Yes, yeah, a few things actually. So we also help veterans that are dealing with MST, military sexual trauma. Okay. And, you know, there's a lot of stigma that oh, it's only women that um, are faced with that kind of trauma, but it's actually all service members, even men. Yes, even men. Mm -hmm. So it's some people are like, what, really? Like, yeah, it can happen to anyone. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. no one is exempt from MST, you know, unfortunately. Right. Um, and also, not... The one thing that really, really caught my attention when I was applying was that they don't care about the discharge status mm -hmm. and the era that you served. So I thought that was really cool because ditch, the discharge status is something that is looked at a lot, you know, especially within other different programs. Mm -hmm. It's something like a criteria that is really important to them. Right. So I thought that was really neat. Good. Reduce yeah. those barriers. Yeah. It's it's all about reducing those barriers. And, and I yeah. think, you know, our definition of what a veteran is is, is different, right, right. Than, yes. than what the VA or some other organizations define a veteran as. For us, it's anyone that raised their right hand and took that oath of service, right? right? So yeah. you're still serving on active duty. You're, you're in the reserve or guard. Come on in. Right. We'll take care of you. Yeah. Right. Uh, you didn't serve in a war? But that, that's fine. We'll come, yeah. in, come in and we'll take care of you. So. Right. Um, and then that family definition, right? Equally as liberal. You call them family, we call them family. Yes. Right. Allie yeah. Hernandez. Hey, yeah, Allie. That's from Emily. Shout out to Zenloft, located at 6 West Downer. Oh, a great gosh. place to go. They have a big yeah. hammock in there. They do. They do yeah. yoga yeah. and all that. It's right around the corner. So if you're looking for a place to uh, take a quick nap, you can't be in there sleeping all day. <laughs> but if you want to <laughs> you wanna shut your eyes for 10 minutes and chill, you can definitely go there. And Leo Zarco is here. Right. Leo Zarco is a great poet, local, great guy. He's a good good brother. Leo Zarco, I'm glad to see you today. All right, time's 8.52. Um, so the last thing, Robin, good morning. Vanessa rodriguez Aguirre, good morning. And Robert Brown, good morning. And Michael Rayford. Um, I think the last thing, and we'll end on this before I give you guys the, the word of the day, is um, Rush is in Chicago, um, and you're part of the, uh, it's the Warrior Care Network. Mm -hmm. Four different hospitals involved in the, in the network. Um, are there plans, or will we see the Warrior Care Network expand with more hospitals, or will it be replicated in perhaps other towns and cities? That's a good question. It is a good question. Jeez. I, that's all we do on this show, y'all. That's uh, all, yeah. we do. all we got is good questions. You just <laughs> don't have bangers. I, um, I, I, you know, I, I, really, I, I, I yeah. studied for you guys today. I did, man. Yeah, I studied for y'all today. All right, all right, all right. So, you know, easy answer is I hope so. I okay. really do. Yes. You know, I, I think especially as, you know, the, the – pulled back out of Afghanistan and out of Iraq and not, you know, I don't think we're currently engaged in conflicts right now at the level we were back in early 2000s. Um, you know, I hope it doesn't get forgotten, right? right. The PTSD sort of fades in and the, and the next new thing comes up. So I, I really hope so. Um, I, I feel confident that, you know, there's organizations that are just doing good, right? And I think going to start to see more of them and more of them pop up so um whether it's the headstrong project whether it's the warrior care network whether it's the cohen veterans network the vet centers you know mental health options are out there um i hope our model takes foot and really expands i know locally in illinois we're, we're looking to expand you know we've got the clinic in downstate in effingham i think we'd Probably like to add another one uh, somewhere and help out those rural veterans that you know got to drive an hour to a VA. You know, right. maybe we yeah. can find something closer. So, um, yeah. I, I wish I had a, a definite answer. But no, that's that, I hope that's, so. That's Hopefully, answer, I hope so. Man. Is as good as it gets. Hope will get you a lot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hope will get you. Hope. I'm telling you, don't don't discount hope. Mm -hmm. You know, 
No, we need hope is not a strategy. Shit. <laughs> you ain't got if you if, if that's all you got, that might work. Yeah. yeah. Um so the number 312-942 vets is in the chat. You guys can see that as well. And uh, we also put the link to the website in the chat. Uh, as you guys know, we are, we do have a job. So the time's 855. We got wrapped up a little bit early, but uh, the show ends on a positive note. What is your message today to the people of the state of Illinois, not just Aurora? Uh, and we'll start with you, Alan. All right, so my message would be to not hesitate to reach out when you need help. You know, there's different forms of help and um, you gotta really look at what's gonna work for you and the resources are there, so always reach out. Always Don't be reach afraid. Out. Don't be afraid, reach out. Don't be afraid yeah. to do what I say. <laughs> That's a jam. Anyway, Christopher. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I'm on, on De Niro, right? The word of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully some sparkles show up above right. my head. Yeah, no, um, rainbow or yeah. something. Right. <laughs> uh, Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I want to echo what she said. Help is out there, you know? Yeah. You just got to find it. Yeah, find what works you for you. You just got to find it. Yeah, there's many organizations out there, and they're all doing really great work, like, yeah. we're, like he was mentioning. and. You gotta find what's gonna work for you. Mm -hmm. Whether right. you're a veteran, whether you're just, you know, a regular civilian or a family member of a veteran or a friend of a veteran, mm -hmm. there are resources. Yeah. Don't right. hesitate. We're yeah. here. Find your tribe. Find, find your, your tribe. tribe. That's, that's my rainbow. Find there you your go. Tribe. Find, find your tribe. tribe. I like yes. That. Find your tribe. All right. Well, we appreciate you both coming on to the show today. Thanks. Uh, we really do. We hope that there is a. Uh, we hope that there's a veteran or a family of a veteran who can watch this, take the information, and make good use of it. Uh, and as you guys know, Good Morning Aurora is a show that supports veterans. So if you or anyone you know needs questions or any kind of help in getting involved or getting in touch with our Friends of the Road Home program, you can definitely send us a DM, and we will keep the DM to ourselves, and we will pass you along and make sure that you get the care and attention that you deserve. The time is 8.57 a.m. We hope you all have a fantastic day today. Uh, and before I give you my last word, I want to say this. I want to say this. To all of the people who are considering joining the military, all you young people who sometimes hit me up, hey, Curtis, man, what was the Navy like? Uh, I'm thinking about joining the Take a little time to figure out who you are first. Mm -hmm. Instead of looking at whatever the branch may be as that creating who you are, take a little bit more time, maybe one more year, maybe work, right? Maybe one more year at college. Maybe try to get a job a little bit more. And then, of course, do what makes you happy. Go Marines, go Army, go Navy. We got Space Force. <laughs> Coast Guard. Yeah, we got the Space that. Force. Shout out to the National Guard. Everybody. Yes. Everybody. Uh, yeah. All right. Take care of yourself and each other.